Welcome back to Coding with Flutter. Today I have a special announcement to make, and that is that my full Flutter course is available for sale on Udemy. And this includes more than 20 hours of content showing you everything you need to know to become a competent Flutter developer. In the past few months, many students have already enrolled and reviewed this course, making it one of the highest rated courses on Udemy. So if you want to fast track your learning with a top Flutter course and you want to support my work, this is the time to buy my course and you can get this at a very discounted price by using the link that you can find in the description below this video. By the way, if you want to find out what's in the course, you can watch the rest of this video, which contains a full introduction. Hello and welcome to my course on coding with Flutter. By taking this course, you will learn how to use Flutter and Firebase to build a complete mobile app for iOS and Android. Flutter is an amazing framework that you can use to write native mobile apps. And Flutter was designed to work on multiple platforms. This means that you can write code in a single language called Dart, and this is then compiled into native code that runs on iOS, Android, and beyond. So, this course will start by covering the basics of Flutter and the Dart language, but we won't stop there. We will see how to use Firebase to build a modern reactive application following best practices. And we will learn about more advanced topics such as state management, streams, blocks, and reactive programming, so that by the end of this course you will know how to build robust and maintainable apps that can run in production. So, if you are new to Flutter, you can follow this course from beginning to end, even if you have zero programming experience. Or if you prefer, you can learn more about specific topics by following the sections that are most relevant to you. I have put all my knowledge into this course and I will guide you through a lot of important concepts with diagrams and clear explanations. And I'm confident that this will save you a lot of time and money because by the end of this course, you will have a strong foundation and be a competent Flutter developer. So whether you are learning Flutter to build your own apps or you want to get a job as a Flutter developer, this course will fast track your learning and will give you the skills and knowledge that you need. I'm very excited to have you on board and I can't wait to get started. Hello and welcome to my course on coding with Flutter. By taking this course, you will learn how to use Flutter to build your own mobile apps that run on iOS and Android. We will start from the basics, and this means that you don't need to have any prior experience building mobile apps. By using Flutter, you can have one single code base written with the Dart language and have your apps run both on iOS and Android. And because Flutter code is written in Dart, I have created an entire section in this course to teach you the Dart language. Together, we will build a real-world application, starting from the basics and then introduce more concepts and best practices, so that you can learn how to build robust applications that scale. The goal of this is that by the end of this course, you will have a strong foundation and be a competent Flutter developer. By taking this course, you will also learn how to build modern reactive applications. Together, we will make an app that uses Firebase as a backend, and we will see how Flutter and Firebase really work well with each other. So not only you will be learning Dart and Flutter, but I will also cover Firebase in detail. And a lot of the concepts that we will cover are still going to be very valuable, even if you choose a different backend other than Firebase for your own apps. Remember that this course is designed to be very practical and hands-on. As a general rule, I will always explain what we are going to build first and why, and then how to build it. And we'll always take things step by step. To facilitate your learning, I'll be using a lot of diagrams to explain important concepts. This will give you a strong foundation and you will be able to take the techniques that you learn here and use them when you build your own Flutter apps. In this course, I will show you how to build a time tracking application from beginning to end. This is a Flutter app which is composed of multiple screens and in the next video I'll give you a good overview of this app in detail. This application uses Firebase on the backend. Firebase is a backend as a service platform provided by Google which you can use in your own apps. Firebase comes with an extensive range of products. 
and you can learn more about them on the Firebase website. As part of this course, we will focus specifically on Firebase Authentication and Firebase Cloud Firestore. To help you get a better idea about the topics that I will cover in this course, I have created this diagram. So we will start by learning the Dart language, and after we complete the installation and a brief introduction to Flutter, we will start building our application. Along the way, we will learn about layouts in Flutter, and then we will add authentication with Firebase, and we will talk about state management, streams, and reactive programming. We will see how to use Google and Facebook to authenticate users into our app, and we will learn about forms and validation by building an email and password form. And we will gradually introduce more advanced topics by covering inherited widget, provider, blocks, and more state management techniques. And after all of this, we will talk about Cloud Firestore, and we will see how to create and update data with forms, and also how to show it with list views. And there will also be a section on date and time pickers, and we will focus on navigation in Flutter. And we will learn about advanced stream operations with Direct Start. And finally, we will have a very extensive section about unit and widget tests, so that we can learn how to write automated tests in a variety of scenarios. So we will learn about all these topics and a lot more. So let's continue on the next video, where I'll give you a complete overview of the app that we are going to build. In this video, I'm going to show you the entire app that we will build in this course. So let me give you a good overview of the app screen by screen. First of all, we are presented with this sign-in screen, which gives us options to sign in into the app in four different ways. We can sign in with Google, Facebook, email and password, and anonymously. These are all sign-in methods that are offered by Firebase. If we choose the first option, we are taken through a Google sign-in flow where we would enter an email, password, and possibly additional steps such as two-factor authentication. For now, I'm going to hit cancel so that I can show you the other signing methods. Facebook has a similar flow, which also requires us to sign in with our Facebook credentials, and we're going to also skip this and see the remaining options. The last two methods are signing with email and signing anonymously. If I tap on this last option, the app will create an anonymous account with Firebase and sign me in immediately. Instead, if we choose signing with email, we are taken to this email signing form, and here we can choose to create an account if we don't have one already, or we can sign in by entering an email and password. So let's do that. Once we are signed in, we land to the home page for our app. And as you can see, this is composed by three tabs named Jobs, Entries, and Account. We can use the Jobs page to view the list of existing jobs or create a new one. Here we can add a name such as Learn Firebase, and we can also select a rate per hour. And once we save, the job is added to our list over here. If we tap through it, we are taken to an empty screen, and from here we can start adding some entries for our job. So to do this, we can select the beginning time, like this, and we also can select the end time for our entry. And if we want, we can enter a comment as well, like this. Once the entry has been created, it appears on the list over here, and we can edit the entry by tapping on it and modifying the values on this form. Or if we want, we can delete the entry with a swipe to dismiss gesture, like this. At any point, we can edit the current job, for example, by changing the current name, like this. And when we come back, we can see that the title has been updated. And if we navigate back one level, once again, we can add new jobs, or if we want, we can delete jobs once again with a swipe gesture, like this. Now, if we head over to the Entries tab, we are going to see a chronological list of all the entries that we have added for each job. These are grouped by day, and we can see the number of hours and the total pay. Finally, if we head over to the Account tab, here we are going to see some information about the current user and we have the ability to log out so that we can sign in with a different account if we want. 
So this is the application that we are going to build in this course. And once again, we will start from scratch and cover a lot of interesting topics as we go along. In the last video, we have seen a complete walkthrough of the Time Tracker app that we will build together. And this application does a lot of different things, but it is still something that we can start building from scratch and step by step. And since this is a big course, I'd like to give you some advice so that you can make the most of it. First of all, I recommend that you watch the videos. And this is a great way to learn a lot of concepts that might be new to you. And if you don't understand something, don't be afraid to stop and watch the videos again. And since doing things is a good way to learn, I highly recommend that you code with me as we go along. And that way you can try things out by yourself. And if you want, you can even experiment as you make progress. In fact, I highly encourage you to take the concepts that you learn here and apply them in your own apps. And by the way, if your code doesn't work for whatever reason, you can always compare it with mine and see if you missed something. Or you can even grab the latest copy in the resources at the end of each lesson. Or if you prefer, you can even download the entire project from GitHub and you will be able to see all the changes lesson by lesson. Okay, so in addition to the videos and the source code, make sure to also check out the resources in this course. And at the end of each section, I often include a document with useful links to the official documentation or other resources, so that you can expand your knowledge even beyond what we have covered in the course. Finally, if you get stuck, you can ask questions in the QA section of this course. And remember that the QA section is just as useful for you as it is for other students. So I encourage you to only ask questions that are directly related to the course material so that they are relevant for everyone. And by the way, I follow the QA section very actively myself. So if you ask relevant questions there, I will answer them and you will not have to wait for long. But once again, always compare your code with mine and try to fix it first before asking a question on the QA. And this is a very good way to learn. By the way, this course covers a lot of different topics, so if you feel that you already understand the basics well or you are interested in a specific topic, feel free to choose any video as a starting point and you will have access to all the source code up until that point. Ok, so let's continue on the next video. Ok, so we have completed the introduction to my course. And once again, you can enroll at a very discounted price by using the link that you can find in the description below this video. And by the way, this course comes with a 30 day money back guarantee, so you really have nothing to lose. So I hope that you will join other students that are learning Flutter and Firebase with my course. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy my course.